What's going on summoners? Welcome back to another Pro Guides video. I'm Kangas, and today we'll be talking about 10 sleeper OP builds that you should be abusing in the free season. You probably already know the popular OP picks and builds since they're all over social media, including our own YouTube channel, but today we're going to be taking a look at some of the lesser known builds. But before that, go check out our Wild Rift channel if you're going to be playing the mobile version of League. It is the perfect opportunity to fall in love with the game all over again. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so first off, obviously champion pick and win rates are good indicators of how they're doing. But with the new item system, there is a lot to explore. Some champs have an overall low win rate, but one build is really OP. In other cases, there are champs that are barely being played at all, but when they are picked and built correctly, they can absolutely stomp games. And lastly, there are some champs that are already pretty good, but with just changing one or two items out, they go from pretty good to really OP. The first build we're going to discuss is for Echo. Your full six item build will be Night Harvester, Lich Bane, Sork Shoes, Mejai Soul Stealer, Rabidons, and Void Staff. If you need it, Zonius can be put into place over Mejai's if you really feel that you need that protection. But if you're playing Echo well and using your ult properly, you shouldn't need a Zonius to stay alive. Aside from Night Harvester, this build is pretty much standard with what most people build on Echo. Your runes will be the standard page, with that being Electrocute, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Transcendence, and Gathering Storm. AP Echo's build has pretty much always involved rushing protobelts, and with the new items, most people have continued that by making their first purchase its upgraded mythic version, the Hextech Rocket Belt. The newer item still serves the same functionality as the previous version, with the addition of movement speed after using the active, and with the mythic passive being flat magic pen on all other items. At first glance, this item is definitely good on Echo, and that's not entirely wrong. It definitely is good on Echo. But what some players have caught on to is just how insanely broken Night Harvester is instead. While you do lose the flat magic pen, the raw damage of Night Harvester combines with Lich Bane to give your E some insane burst damage. And while Rocket Belt's active gives movement speed, Night Harvester's proc also gives you the zoomies, allowing you to reposition to make sure you hit both parts of your Q. And since the cooldown is per champion, you can dart from target to target. Up next, we have Misfortune. The build here is Eclipse, Berserker Greaves, The Collector, Infinity Edge, Lord Dominic's Regards, and Rapid Fire Cannon. If you need the lifesteal, you can also replace either LDR or RFC with Bloodthirster. As for runes, those will also be different than the standard PTA build. You're looking at Dark Harvest, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Presence of Mind, and Legend Bloodline. Misfortune started off pretty bad in the preseason, but that's only because everyone else was trying to build her in the same style as before, rushing crit items, which just aren't as OP anymore. Instead, the new build combines early lethality with crit in the mid to later stages of the game. With how strong lethality is early game, and the new crit damage scaling on Infinity Edge, this build makes it so that you can be a lane bully that scales nicely as the game goes on, without worrying about a mid-game power trough or falling off in the later parts of the game. Now we'll be looking at Fiora. The build here is Ravenous Hydra, Gore Drinker, Plated Steel Caps or Merc Treads, Death Stance, Black Cleaver, and Sterics Gauge. If you're dealing with AP threats, Sterics can be swapped out for either Spear Vistage or Maw of Malmordius. If you really want to max out your ability haste, you can opt for Lucidity Boots. But with you already having so much, you'll usually get more bang for your buck out of the tankier options. For runes, you'll bring Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Bloodline, Last Stand, Transcendence, and Gathering Storm. With tanks being so overwhelmingly strong at the moment, Fiora already has a nice place in the meta. She only really needs one item to deal with them now, since Ravenous Hydra is so OP that you can rush it, despite it not being a mythic. Once it's done, you can have near instant wave clear thanks to the cleave, a ton of sustain, and since it now gives Omnivamp, the vital procs give crazy healing during a fight. While the standard Triforce build does technically make Fiora better in a 1v1 situation, Gore Drinker is a better item for team fighting, or winning the split push battle even when 2-3 enemies show up to stop you. First of all, the active can give some insane healing, especially when you consider the synergy it has with Ravenous Hydra, but that's not what makes the build OP. The mythic passive on Gore Drinker gives haste to your other items, and with this build, you can easily break 50% cooldown reduction. 
This means constant dashes, more parries, and all that haste also reduces the Gore Drinker active for even crazier healing. This gives you a much better chance at outplaying opponents and eventually turning you into a 1v5 machine. If you want to learn how to solo carry your games with a champion like Fiora, be sure to check out ProGuides.com, where one of our coaches can easily show you everything, from the basics to more advanced techniques on how to carry like a challenger. Don't let Kindred's abysmal win rate fool you. The champ is insanely broken with this build that we're about to cover. Sort of like Fiora, this build makes use of an OP legendary item before you build your mythic. You're going to rush the collector, boots will be situational with Berserker Greaves being preferred since you don't build much attack speed on items, but plated seal caps and merc treads are still good if you need either of them. Then pick up your Trinity Force, Ravenous Hydra, Chempunk Chainsword, and Lord Dominic's regards. For runes, you'll go press the attack, triumph, alacrity, last stand, eyeball collection, and Ravenous Hunter. This build is insanely broken because you get your attack speed from Trinity Force Mythic Passive and build pure damage with your other items. On top of that, your low cooldown Q gives tons of Spellblade procs, while you're also dealing tons of splash damage from Hydra. You'll be absolutely destroying squishy targets with this build, but if the enemy team has some tanky targets, you're free to sub in Divine Sunderer for Trinity Force, and to pick up Black Cleaver and Blade of the Rune King in the later parts of the build. Also with a little bonus, we want to credit Forest Within for letting us in on this hidden OP build. So we're going to play a part of his video before we move on to the mid lane. Take it away. So I think right now, from what I've understood between other streamers and like the Kindred subreddit and whatnot is like everyone thinks Kindred is awful. 45% win rate, needs buffs, it's champions gutted, worthless, whatever. I think it's so, you could not be more wrong. I think Kindred is so grossly overpowered and it's getting swept under the rug. Um, like as you can see here by some of these games, uh, I've been smurfing on my stream. I mean, these are like, I mean, I'm smurfing, but like these are like Diamond 4 to Diamond 1 games. But as you can see, like most of these games are Diamond 1. I'm out here dropping nukes. Man, like talking to chat while streaming, like like joking around, having fun, like challenging people to 1v5s and stuff, like collecting clips. Like I'm out here dropping nukes, man. Kindred is not weak by any means, I promise you. Looking back at mid for yet another assassin people aren't fully taken advantage of, we have Katarina. For items, you'll want Riftmaker, Sork Shoes, Lich Bane, Nasher's Tooth, Rabidon's Death Cap, and Void Staff. For runes, make sure you're running Dark Harvest, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Triumph, and Coupe de Gras. If the enemy team comp is especially tanky, a Conqueror Page is easily interchangeable. Night Harvester definitely provides more burst, and when snowballing, it will feel really strong for the same reason that it does for Echo. The crazy upfront burst will let you one-shot people when you're super far ahead, but swapping it out for Riftmaker trades out the burst for better extended DPS in teamfights. And since Katarina thrives in 5v5s, where resets quickly lead to pentakills, that makes it our pick for her build. So far, all we've had is carries, so let's throw a tanky CC bot into the mix. In this case, we're talking about the Scorpion with the brand new skin, Skarner. You'll be building Termo Chem Tank, Merc Treads, Dead Man's Plate, Death Stance, Force of Nature, and Gargoyle Stone Plate. For runes, take Phase Rush, Nimble Cloak, Celerity, Water Walking, Magical Footwear, and Cosmic Insight. This build is what people are already building most of the time when they pick up. In this case, it's not his build, so much as the champ himself that's Sleeper OP. Skarner's success as a jungler is largely due to his ability to make picks on disrespectful opponents. And in solo queue, there are a lot of disrespectful opponents. What makes him even better than before is that this new build path lets him rush Turbo Chem Tank, which is just a better version of Righteous Glory. This means his very first item makes his ult catching potential much stronger. It also means that you can run Phase Rush and still have a Predator-esque rune for engaging ganks and teamfights. Skarner as a champion is mechanically pretty simple. Spam Q, land E, and use the point and click ult to make game-winning picks. So what separates a good Skarner from a bad one? It's all about pathing and decisions. If you feel like you struggle with those difficult but very teachable areas of the jungle, make sure to visit ProGuides.com where our roster of coaches can help you with those concepts and anything else you can think to throw at them. Now's a good time to take a look at our question of the day. What item do you think is overrated? There's definitely a lot of OP items in the new shop, but we think some items are a bit overused. Personally, while I understand why AD carries love this item, I think Immortal Shield Bow falls into this category. It's definitely really good when you need it, and it helps you survive for much longer, but I'm not seeing a lot of people buy the DPS machine Kraken Slayer, which adds so much to a hyper carries build. Be sure to let us know your choice in the comments below. Another jungle here is Udyr. 
And for him, you'll be building Stride Breaker, Merc Dreads, or Plated Seal Caps, Blade of the Rune King, Sterix Gage, Death Stance, and Dead Man's Plate. You can swap out either of those last two for Spear Visage if you need some magic resist. For runes, you'll want Conqueror, Triumph, Alacrity, or Tenacity depending on the enemy comp, Last Stand, Cheap Shot, and Ravenous Hunter. Towards the end of the season, Udyr got a couple of buffs to his R Phoenix stance, and we have mentioned how the buffs he got wouldn't really help make him viable. In the world of Season 10 League of Legends, the champ was just too outdated. But that's not exactly the case for Pre-Season 11, and it has nothing to do with those R buffs. In fact, this build is AD, so you'll be doing the standard Q Max for Tiger Stance Udyr. This is due to the item update introducing Stride Breaker, which gives Udyr a gap closer, a slow, and tons of movement speed. He gets even more chasing strength with Blade of the Ruin King, with that proc also giving more burst damage to his kit. Udyr has always had a ton of damage when you actually build him as a carry, and these new and reworked items give him a form of mobility that he just didn't have access to before. One quick tip, because of his W, Udyr doesn't actually need a health potion. Just start Q and take W second, and you can save the extra 150 gold for some cheesy quick item purchases. But Udyr isn't the only champ we have abusing this item. Darius is another champ who can use it to bump up a notch or three. For this build, you'll be going Stride Breaker, Plated Steel Caps or Merc Dreads, Black Cleaver, Sterix Gage, Death Stance, and Spear Visage. For runes, you'll want Conqueror, Triumph, Tenacity, Last Stand, Second Wind, Nimbus Cloak, and Celerity. As always, run Flash and Ghost. You won't be wanting to TP here. Darius definitely didn't need anything to push him to the top, since he dominated almost the entirety of Season 10. But nonetheless, he really makes use of this item's active. Normally, Darius players run ghosts to run down opponents, often resulting in cheese kills on players not used to playing against him. With Stridebreaker, you can use the active to jump on opponents even when Ghost is down. The rest of the build is pretty standard, with Steric Gage, Death Stance, and Spear Visage giving you super high amounts of effective HP, especially if you hit a huge Q. This build will let you get into the fight, live long enough to ramp up your passive, and slaughter your enemies with a reset after reset. Many players relied on Glacial Augment to make some champs work, due to how much it enabled their engage and catch potential. While some champs have fallen off as a direct result of the loss of the item, Nico is actually doing better as long as you build her the right way. The key is to go for Hextech Rocket Belt over Luden's Echo, and follow that with Sork Shoes, Zoni's Hourglass, Demonic Embrace, Rabadons, and Void Staff. Where Glacial gave you slows to make landing your combo easier, Rocket Belt just makes it so you go fast. It's pretty much a righteous glory for casters. This is absolutely perfect on a champ like Nico, who wants to build damage and engage at the same time. To use it properly, you want to use W in conjunction with a rocket belt for a speedy engage that immobile champs won't be able to escape from. You don't even have to hit your root first, as long as your targets don't have flash. Zonia's and Demotic Embrace give you plenty of tankiness to survive even in the middle of a teamfight, with the rest of the build serving to make your engage deal tons of damage. Nico has a pretty strong laning phase, and this build enables her to shine on teamfights without having to sacrifice damage for the option to start fights herself. Our last build is for a champ that is practically lost and forgotten. I forget this guy's in the game all the time. I mean, when was the last time you've even seen a Yorick? For the Yorick diehards out there, you're gonna want to go Divine Sunderer, Plated Steel Caps or Merc Treads, Dead Man's Plate, Sterix Gage, Ravenous Hydra, and either Death Stance or Spear Visage, depending on the enemy comp. For runes, run Grasp of the Undying, Demolish, Second Wind, Overgrowth, Legend Alacrity, or Tenacity depending on if you're dealing with Heavy CC, and then Last Stand. Yorick's playstyle makes him a persistent split pushing threat, and with the newly added Divine Sunderer, he's doing really well against tanks and bruisers alike. Like Ezreal, he actually has a decent amount of magic damage in his kit, with his E and ultimate, so Split Pen Mythic passive puts in some extra work, while the Spellblade portion of Divine Sunderer pairs really well trading with Grasp of the Undying. This build also gives a bit of tankiness, but don't think you can just walk into a 5v5 teamfight with ease. Yorick is best in the sideline, and is better in a 1v2 than in a teamfight setting. Stick to splitting to win your games by being a constant thorn in your opponent's side. Every time they group for a dragon, just take a tower or an inhib. And that wraps things up for our sleeper builds you're missing out on in the preseason. Remember to let us know what items you think are overrated in the comments down below. We really love to see what you all have to say. I can't wait to see you back in the next video. So until then, good luck on the rift, stay hydrated, and wash your hands. I caught it that time. <laughs>